Welcome to Ozaki's How to Develop SIP PBX with Ozaki VoIP SDK Tutorial Part 2. In this video, I will show you how to set up authentication in your PBX project. With this function, you can manage who can register to your system. And I will demonstrate how to make a simple dial plan. With this, you can affect where the calls will be forward to. For example, if your employee on a day off then nobody can call him or her. First, I need you to open the MyPBX application that we made in the first video. If you're ready, let's make a new class. The name of my class will be User Info. It's a really simple class. It only has two string type variables, the username and the password. Make set and get methods for them. The constructor has two parameters. Our local username's value will be equal with the parameter user's value and the local password's value will be equal with the parameter password's value. The second class we need to make is the user info container class. It has a dictionary type allowed users variable. The type of the key will be string and the type of the value will be user info. Middle constructor And if we get this, we need to make an add user info method with user info type parameter. If our allowed user dictionary already contains the username we want to add, then throw an, an invalid operation exception with a message. Else add that user to the allowed users. And finally, make a bool type try get user info function. Now it's time to update our MyPBX class. Add the new user info container type variable to the class. and add a set user info method call to the constructor. This method doesn't exist yet, so generate this method. We need to set up the user info container and after that we make some username from 100 to 109. password will be equal with the username. And we add them to the user info container. Now let's make the unauthentication request method. We write the line to the console the authentication request received from and the username as well. Make an authentication object and the user info variable. If the user info container has the actual extension, then the result will be equal extension dot check password value. else we write on the console that we cannot find this extension. 
if the result dot authentication accepted value is true then the authentication accepted as the authentication denied and the function will return with the result this was my example for set up the authentication but it's important to say we have many other options to use this functionality now let's make the dial plan example make a new class like the usual way and name it for example my dial plan provider add the dial plan phone calls and service using lines to the class then implement the i dial plan provider interface make a user info container an i extension container and a list type variables The list will contain the do not disturb extensions. In the constructor we make the basic settings. Then add the iDial provider interface members, the name and the get destination function. Make the diode number and the caller phone number variables. If our diode number was star 90 and the DND extension list doesn't contain the caller phone number, then add this phone number to the list and finish the call. If the diode number was star 91, then remove our phone number from the list and finish the call. If the diode number is in the list, stop the call as we can call the number. Let's go back to the MyPBX class and modify the onStar method with the call manager and extension container variables and with our dial plan provider. These were my setup examples for authentication and for the dial plan. Now let's see how it works. Run the application and open two SOC phone demos. Add the SIP account. Try it for example with 200 username and 200 password. Click on the register and you can see status is forbidden because in our setup the user name only could be between 100 and 109. Now register the user 100. The status will be registration succeeded. In the other soft phone I registered the user 101. If we dial the number star 90 our phone number will be added to DND list and we can't call this user. But if we dial the star 91 the number will be removed from the list and we can call it now. We finished the second video of how to develop SIP PBX with Ozeki VoIP SDK. For more information, please visit www.voip-sip-sdk.com and you can contact us at info at voip-sip-sdk.com. Please check out the next part of this tutorial video series. Thank you for watching.